So um, I'm, uh, I, I'm closing, which is sort of a dubious, uh, a dubious place to be. But uh, it's confident. It's, Absolutely, absolutely. So what I, I'm going to be talking about, I, I, um, something that I actually spoke about last week in Bryant Park in New York. Uh, so, oh, hold on just two seconds. Let me just go back. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about fast shopper, slow store. So I, I was invited down by the, uh, the DMA, the uh, Digital Marketing Association, to talk about, hey, wh how do you connect with, with consumers, right? And so we actually did uh, what they call flash con. So we went down to Bryant Park, and in the middle of Bryant Park with all the pigeons and everything, I, I gave a similar sort of presentation. And so I'm going to give a bit of a New york -y spin on this one. So because it's the last little, little chat, I want to spice things up. I'm going to throw a little bit of sex into the conversation here. So basically, mobile is a little bit like this, this sort of retro uh, image here. When when I deal with retailers and I deal with brands and, and, and they all want to use mobile to do really fun stuff, right? I say, look, it, it, go back to those days when you were in university and you went into the bar and there was a good looking gal or there was a good looking guy and you wanted to sort of hook up, right? And so you didn't go up to the bar and saddle next to this person and say, hey, excuse me, have you got a website address? You know, or gee, have you got an app? I could download, or gee, is there an NFC tag around there somewhere that I could tap, right? <laughs> you, you, you went up to them and you said that, gee, could I get your phone number? The same question your mom asked your dad or your dad asked your mom to get the second date, right? And that's what we do in mobile because, gee, you know, when you look at this thing, and that's a pretty damn fast phone there. That's a powerful thing. Do you know how much fast? I know, I know you, there have been discussions about how fast that phone is. Um, I was in a number of uh, discussions today when they said, gee, even Canal said, hey, that's a fast phone. It's faster than the, the, the rocket, the guidance computer that sent the first rocket to the moon. But how much faster? Give me a number. How much faster? 10? 10. Thousand. Thousand. Thousand's a lot. Any, any others? Okay. It's 2,000 times faster. And that's the Dan Nexus. If you look at you know, what is new, that's new. And that is 2,600 times faster. These are mammoth, almost like, it's hard to comprehend that that is sitting in your pocket, right? The problem is, that that is sitting in your pocket. And because it's such a fast device, that all these retailers and brands that want to connect with the gal or the guy in the bar think, oh my gosh, I'm doing it through such a powerful device. What can I use the capabilities of this device? What are the, what's at my disposal to connect with this gal and this guy? And that's what we're going to be talking about today because it's all about George. Here's my New York stuff, right? It's all about George because although Google wants to make you believe that they are going to help George. What they really want is to connect to George's wallet in a very personal way. They want to go beyond credit cards and they want to go beyond debit. They even want to go beyond cash. What they want to do is get into what makes George George. What receipts does he have in the, his wallet? What affinity cards? What's George's personality? Because that's big data. Understanding the relationship that you can establish with George is going to make or break the mobile industry going forward over the next few years. So it's about picking up, unfortunately, George at the bar, right? And, and so let's, let's take a look at what your phone actually is used for. This amazing phone, 2,600 times faster than the computer that sent the first person to the moon. So yeah, it's used for Email, and if you're a healthy mobile adult, you will be emailing during this presentation, right? It's used, obviously, for social networking, to check the weather, um, you know, hey, I'll Google Gary, I'll find out, you know, what's happening uh, with, with uh, headlines and sports, of course. Uh, I'll find out, you know, where this place is, because obviously a few of you did Google location. Uh, and, and it's obviously used for retail. But primarily, 60% of the use, people who have phones use it to take photographs. 60%.
Only 31% are playing games. 60% are using it for photographs. 74% are using it for text messaging. This is a text messaging device. The computer that's 2,600 times faster than the rocket that sent the first person to the moon is primarily used to send text messages. <laughs> okay? So that's why we're so screwed. Because that's why, while things are so complex, they're so simple. We've lost our connection to the consumer. We've lost our connection to George. And so bricks and mortar is in huge flux. We're closing, we're reinventing. Ads spend, publishing, how they make money is in huge flux. Again, losing value, reinventing. Mobile wallets. Also, where is that going? You know, maybe 2012, before we start to get something in the market, but if you look at, you know, these big, wonderful press releases with Rogers and CIBC, we all know that those are just optics. We know that those are early, early positioning statements. This is coming, we don't know when, but the wallet is in flux. And when you look at everything that's changing, there's some interesting things happening. And, and this I love, because it's showing that not only are things, it's, it's not as if you know, retail started and now retail is, is, is in its dying you know, motions. And suddenly the store was great. It was invented on the prairies with uh, you know, uh, Sears Roebuck and now it's here with Block, Blockbuster and, and, and Target and, and, uh, and, and uh, Borders and, and all the other sort of disrupted stores and retail is dying. No, it's, it's a continuum. And the reality is that retail is changing and it's innovating. And this is an example of where retail is going. It's not a store. It is not the internet. But here are people, although this particular example was more of a campaign based, made you look kind of thing. This is an example of a store that exists between those two pillars, right? So if you go back again to New York, it's a little bit dark, but that, 120 years ago, or 1888 to be exact, Thomas Adams put the first sweet and gumball machines on the New York subway. Huge innovation. Why? Why was it such an innovation? But suddenly, I could buy gumballs and I didn't have to worry about going to the store. I could be on the New York subway and say, gee, I'd like a gumball and I could dispense. Well, what happened 120 years later, you had people in subway stations in Singapore doing similar things. And we go, oh my gosh, this is such innovation. Last minute Valentine gifting. Oh my gosh. And you have people on subway stations in Seoul doing innovative stuff. Wow, this is revolutionary. And something that I got the wrong layer in, <laughs> that's actually, if we could switch those out, that's on a, subway st that's on a train station in Hamburg. Um, it's a, a drug company. The bottom line is, 120 years later, and, and hey, train stations are really disruptive places, right? And why? It's because if you can read what's on the top of that, what is Thomas Adams trying to sell you? Fresh sweets, but primarily saving time. What, what, why, it was so in a, it, it, why it was such an innovation 120 years ago is because it made your life easier. It made it fit into your daily routine. He found a gap in the retail cycle, and he capitalized on that. He dispensed manually. We're dispensing into the cloud. Not too much different. We're finding a niche when consumers can engage with us and buy things on their terms. And so when you look at and the last conversation was a little bit about this, you know, where people are spending their money. Here is ad spend versus time spend. And something's a little, you know, out of whack in Camelot, right? So we know that there's a bit of a problem here if, if only 1% of the revenue is spent on mobile, but there's so much time spent on that medium, and there's 29% is spent on print, but only 6% of the actual consumer 
time spent. The, the, what we need to do is maybe, I've been told, take this guy out to lunch and tell him that you know, he's out of a job. But that's not going to happen, because we're going to continue to buy things in a physical way. We're going to continue to buy print media. What we need to do is take mobile, flip it on its head, and put it over here, and create a new medium, a new store, a new interaction. So what does that look like? So the bottom line is the new store is the screen. Mobile is, is a dusty word, and we've talked about that today. Mobile is being co-opted by every industry known to man because you know, putting mobile in front of your company you know, mission statement sounds pretty cool. But the reality is it's not about mobile because mobile is everywhere. It's about the screens because the screens dictate how, how we use mobile in our day, how we use it on the subway, how we buy and dis dispense gumballs. So most of the conversation about mobile is that little guy over there. But reality is, is that that's mobile, that's mobile. Those three I call one-fisted devices because I can still sort of even though it's a little tight with the Kindle Fire, I can sort of get them into my pocket. And when I have them in my hand, I can put it into one hand, somewhat navigate, and not bump into the aisle, right? Then you get into two-fisted devices, which are mobile, because now they connect through the mobile cloud, and they're optimized to be mobile devices. But really, this is a couch potato device. It helps you navigate from the kitchen to the couch, right? And then you have this device, which is a mobile device. And then you have this device, which is sort of looks a hell of a lot like a mobile device, doesn't it? So it has apps on it. You know, with Samsung, you can actually point and move things around, like almost like touch screen. That, although I've been told by my colleague is not really ready for prime time, is a screen. And that is a mobile screen. All the things that you find in your store and the POS and the new, obviously, wallet screens are going to be um, mobile. And so really the challenge in interacting with George and making sure that you become part of his narrative of the day is understanding how George uses these screens. And it becomes more complicated because I'm actually the, the, a native digital folk, which we are, none of us are native digital folk, we're all digital immigrants, right? Um, a switching screens within the screen 27 times per hour. It's very complicated, it's like three-dimensional chess, right? So, uh, so there's your multi-screen switcher, right? And, and it, it's, it's tough to connect with him. It's even tougher when you think that there is a second screen experience. And so now everything in our world that was broadcast in nature is now triangulated around an interactive screen. And the question is, who, what's the primary screen? Is the primary screen the broadcast screen, or is primary screen the interactive screen? When I'm watching Glee and my kids are actually YouTubing Glee and singing along, which is the more valuable screen? Is it the broadcast screen, or is it the screen that they have on their lap? And that's changing the dynamics. CNN and all these guys are going, shit, we're, we're, we're a broadcast company, but we have to learn how to connect directly to, to our consumers. We've never done that. And we have to get into that business. Gone are the days where we can just stand there and say, hey, we broadcast, you buy. So, and everything is now intent on becoming that third screen. And we know that Wii U just launched, which is actually designed as a third screen uh, interactive device. So that is really your primary real estate. So this triangulation you have to take into account. And then you have to take into account that, some, some, that, that the, the, the phone is social in nature and that you can actually build things that connect to one another and, and, and what, what is t the technical term is huddleware, I believe. And then you can talk about social screens. Uh, this is a, an app that we, we just built for the Olympics. We're going to be launching it in London, which is social fitness. So it's not about the screen anymore. It's about the interaction between the screens globally so that you can actually run socially together together in real time. Um, and it's about this screen. Because if we want to connect with George, gone with the days that we silo. So now, when you walk into a store, it's not about the screen that's a kiosk somewhere, and it's not about the screen that's in the person's hand. It's about curating the conversation from bricks and mortar into the cloud through that middle middle world of the subway station. And we have to create a relationship with him where smart companies are going who need to do that are taking iPads or whatever device they can find 
and walking up to the consumer and trying to create a bridge between their device and the cloud so that they aren't in a, in a position where they become a showroom. So how do you do that? So, so if, if I'm Target and I, I cry uncle and I say, oh, my, my store's turning into a showroom, well, do I just stand there and say, oh, you know, complain and send letters as the CEO of Target did to all um, uh, his, his, his partners to say, hey, we have to work out a strategy to counter the mobile threat in our store. No, it's an opportunity. And the opportunity is to make sure that you can create, create the conversation so that whether they check out at your POS in that store or not, they're going to check out in your world. And whether that it happens in the store, which it may not happen, or it happens in the cloud, you have to make sure it doesn't happen in somebody else's cloud. And in order to do that, you have to make sure that you, you convey to the consumer that you can extend their shopping relationship. And in order to do that, you have to walk up with an iPad to somebody that has the, the consumer's experience that they will have when they leave the store at the end of their hand with a, some sort of emit where I can say, okay, well, let me help you with your shopping and let me put this into your wish list. And oh, by the way, give me your, your, e your email or give me your mobile number so I can say, put your wish list into your basket so when you go home, it's all ready for you. And then I've taken the friction out of your shopping experience. And when I get home, I'm going to open that wish list because I'm ready to buy. So you have to work out how to navigate those screens and you have to work out a way of navigating those screens horizontally, not vertically. And you have to work out a way of destroying this cross-channel disconnect because we will die in the cross-channel disconnect. We will fall through the cracks and this guy is going to come up and eat our lunch, right? And so in order to make sure that you avoid the cross-channel cracks, you have to build a relationship with George and a trust with George, and you have to curate the conversation with George. You have to clientele across all those retail touch points with George. And you have to then talk to George in a targeted manner, because George doesn't come through the front door anymore. If you talk to, I think this is Joe Laley, who's head of mobile for MTV, he will tell you that only 30% of his users are hitting his home page. They're all coming in direct. They're coming into that, that alert or that, you know, the, whether that, that be an SMS coming in with a link or whatever. They're going into deep dive content. So you have to know exactly what content that particular consumer wants to get them to that checkout page so that they can find what they want and buy it. And they are not coming to your, to your um, to your world in a very, in a formal way where it's, gee, I'm in, in a thoughtful experience, it's, it's in the, the evening and I've opened my, my PC or whatever, I have my, my large screen experience, I have gin and tonic to my left, I have a dog under my table, I have my wife downstairs, I can discuss buying decisions with, I'm, 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 I'm putting something on, on the internet to see if somebody in my social community will give me feedback. Gone with those days. Most of our decisions are made on impulse in a 15 second window. So yes, when you're looking at Steve Yankovic, who designs for mobile uh, with eBay, yes, they, they're doing a lot of your thoughtful, hey, I'd like to bid on a, uh, a, a grand piano. I may be doing that at home, but when I'm voting, uh, sorry, when I'm bidding on this, I'm bidding at a red light. I'm bidding at uh, the dwell time uh, between the elevator. And that is, in a 15 second window, and Steve Yankovic will say he designed this particular screen for 15 seconds. And, and in order to connect with George across these screens, in these nano moments of his day, in a targeted fashion, I have to start a relationship. And this is the barroom pickup. How do I pick up George? God forbid. I, I'm, I'm, I only have certain vehicles to do that. I can get him to text, I can scan, I can, you know, do some image recognition, I can tap with, with NFC. But I have to establish, I have to do a pickup. I have to have that first, hey, George, do you want to connect? And, and 
how I do this may be just an activation panel. This is an example of something we do at O'Hare Airport, where we put activation panels on all the media, and these all serialize and aff uh, affiliate track back to that media. So that doesn't matter how you activate with George, I know where you activated, I know what media you were in front of, and so I can start a very targeted relationship with you. And, you know, you want to activate wherever they are. Web, the large format web, is an ideal place to activate a relationship. And so, uh, a good example is Estee Lauder with Clinique and Mac. Just, hey, would you like to give me your email address, or would you like to give me your mobile number? The bar and pickup, right? We're not, when, you know, it's a very powerful device, but I'm just asking you for your phone number, dude, because I'd like to call you back and maybe ask you for dinner, right? So if I do that, I'm establishing a loyalist relationship. I don't want to talk to people who don't want to talk to me. I don't want to go to a dinner date with somebody who doesn't want to get married, right? I want to establish a long-term relationship because that's going to drive basket. That's going to drive checkout. Or whatever the, the, the bar and pickup metaphor is of that. And, um, and then so if you speak to Tom Daly, and he speaks to you about his mobile strategy, he'll say it's 70 20 10. And you can actually Google 70 20 10. And Coke will come up. And basically, 70 is Alex, 70% of their budget is allocated to driving a communication relationship with their consumer, messaging, building a CRM relationship so they can target back to you. This world is where they spend all their time. And then 20% is on the rich media experience that goes beyond, behind that. So once I've established that relationship, I can now target into a rich media relationship. And 10% is designing skateboards that can run through brain synapses. Innovation, right? Just, hey, where are things going? Right? And so that's, that's Coke's strategy, and that should be your strategy. And if you do that, you will drive conversion. This is basic stuff. You do A-B testing on email over SMS. You drive an SMS relationship that's a targeted Bar and pickup. I mean, how many people do you have that you SMS? Friends, how many? Give me a number. Five, Five seven, ten. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll really go out there. Twenty, but no more, right? That's a circle of trust, right? And so any brand that enters that circle of trust, my God, that is, that's the holy grail. So if these guys in one year built two million, two million opt-in loyalists. And on those two million opt-in loyalists that are in the circle of trust, that are that one addition to that seven or eight or ten people that they text, they will drive conversion. And they do. Ten times the conversion of email. And these guys know that it's not about talking to somebody about their brand. Who cares about the brand? If I'm going to talk to Estee Lauder, if I'm going to talk to Mac, if I'm going to talk to anybody, I know that it's about buying their products. Like, why, am I, why else am I talking to them? I mean, nobody's delusional. So talk to them about buying your products. In, 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 in ca campaigns that actually involved a shop call to action, we drove much higher click-through rates, right? So, and things that had multimedia, like MMS, or links to websites, and color, and said, hey, look, it's a great jacket, it's beautiful makeup, you know, and buy it, got the ultimate click-through rates. And this is over and above those 10x over traditional uh, CRM. So these are the areas that will allow you to connect to George's wallet. And it's the simple stuff, right? And, and, and just like their screens, there's so many wallets, but it's the wallet that, that captures the relationship behind it that's going to win. So it's probably not going to be the physical integrations. It's going to be the cloud-based stuff. And who's going to win? I don't know, you know? It's, uh, we know that you know, uh, Apple's going to come out with a competitive wallet um, by the end of the year. The, the, the one that captures the relationship and the trust with the consumer is going to win. And remember, there isn't one wallet. There are multiple wallets. And we use, in our day right now, you all use about seven or eight wallets in different ways. Starbucks loyalty card is a wallet. Uh, you store your credentials on, on uh, united.com. That's a wallet. It's a, it's a place where it keeps your credentials and allows you to check out fluidly, right? So basically what it comes down to is I just want you to understand that mobile is not a very complex thing. 
It's a fun thing. And there's huge innovation that can come behind simple ideas of listening to your co consumer's idea, uh, needs and adapting solutions that answer their needs on the platform when they want some gum, right? And if you do that, you will succeed. I think that's the end. Yeah, please call me. Thank you.